folks, I'm the Creepy Kentucky. And I'm Uncle Bill. And today we got a really cool interview. We haven't had too many Fulci alumni on the show over the years. In fact, I can only think of one other person that we've had, right? Yeah. That was Catriona McCall back probably over 10, 15 years ago, whatever it's been. But finally, we got another one. And this is a really cool one because this is a movie that I know that you're a big fan of, right, Uncle Bill? We're both, we both are. Yeah. And I mean, I think this is one of the more unique and cultastic, I would even say, more so than the rest of his films. This is one called uh, House by the Cemetery. And I don't think that we've ever had a chance to really talk to anybody that other than uh, Catriona McCall that had anything to do with any of these, these three classic movies. So this is pretty exciting. Yeah. Sat down with Sylvia Colatina, who played May Freudstein. Freudstein. I don't know how to pronounce Freudstein. it. Freudstein. 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 I May Freudstein. There you go. Yeah. In House by the Cemetery, the little redheaded girl, very memorable, iconic role in this movie, who, as it turns out, she's actually a pretty big horror fan herself. So we thought this would be a really cool chat and um yeah i mean it's just one that I, I don't i didn't know that we would ever be able to do because you don't realize that some of these people can't speak english some of them can and she actually has pretty good english yeah and i think that like um people will get a kick out of this interview i've watched some other interviews that she has done you know it's, she does one for how the house by the cemetery uh blu-ray but i don't think there's another one that goes into anywhere near the detail that we go into in this and i love to do interviews like this and i love it when somebody that we do an interview with is actually enthusiastic about the genre um and she is and she's great and it was a, i think in my opinion it was a great interview yeah so tell us what you think definitely spread the word and everything and we will get this interview rolling here on deadpit.com first question we always have is tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved in acting at such a young age I was very young, actually was half past five, and my mother had a friend, she had two daughters as well, and were already in the system, let's say, and um, so um, I was introduced by her, me and my sister have a sister, she's older, three years older than me, and we started, and probably we did it very good, even better than them, so <laughs> we never knew anything about them about them anymore and we went on instead so i was um she introduced us to her agent and uh, we kept on acting now did you enjoy acting in the beginning like as a child was that something that you enjoyed to do yeah well i for me, it was a very natural. We didn't, we, we weren't aware what we were doing, you know, but we were very professional. Did you want to do that? I say, okay, I want to. We did it. We, we were, we didn't ask ourselves what were we doing. It was like a second job, um, you know, like going to school. We, we thought it was um, a duty. Like, but, but not a duty in, in, in the way that we had to do that. We were very involved and very professional. We said, okay, okay. And at the time, we were not of us. There were not a lot of children acting. So we were well known in the, in the field, let's say. And um, I had some problem just because I had red hair, you know, as I have now, probably, <laughs> you can see. And I was a little bit a strange little girl and, um, you know, a, a hairy girl acting was very unusual at the time. So people treat me, especially not people, not adults, but children treat me not very good. And uh, they told me, oh, well, you're acting. What do you think you are, you know, or uh, you are a witch because you have a red hair and wow. uh, you, t you 
you don't take good luck, stuff like this. So I felt like, you know, an alien, something, <laughs> a person out of everything. Uh, I felt uneasy. Yeah. Now I understand that it's my, um, that's me. But at the time, I didn't realize that uh, having personality, having a, a strong personality and appearing strange, it was something positive. At the time, I didn't know. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, I think that, like, you're one of the more recognizable faces, you know, like in from that time period in horror too, especially like when, when you came on here, I was like, wow. Like, I mean, she's just so recognizable with that. You still movie. look essentially yeah. the same, you know, I mean, you can definitely tell it's the, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. No, yes. Being recognizable at the time for me was a problem. I, I, it was a discomfort for me. But now uh, I know that is a, a value, something positive. I, I, I'm happy the way I am and uh, I have a strong personality and I, I had it, but I didn't know that. So, but I think that my hair, hair helped me a lot to appear a little bit, I want to say weird, but interesting probably at the time because red hair, you know, you know, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with freckles. Yeah, uh, definitely a unique look. Um, now, there were a couple of projects that you did before working on House by the Cemetery that we have not seen. Uh, the Great Alligator was one of those. And yeah. Tigers and Lipstick is what it says on IMDb. Any memories well, of those movies? Here are some strange one. I think uh, I don't know if on IMD there are all the movies I did, and there are some in added in I never heard, so <laughs> I have to update it. But I had lots of um, um, I did lots of job before and for ad advertising TV, advertising lots, and other Italian movies, and uh, um, I met lots of important people such as uh, um, Marcello Mastroianni, you know, Mastroianni is a very, is a very mm -hmm. important Italian uh, actor of the past. And I did lots of interesting things and um, with also uh, important directors in Italy. And the cinema came, uh, you know, Mm, cinema projects came when I was uh, half past seven with uh, The Great Alligator. It was a very big one. I went to Sri Lanka. So mm. I was very happy, yes, at the time. You know, I was very young and it was a very strong experience. While a House by the Cemetery came in 1981. Thereafter, uh, I did with Fulci, Murder Rock in 1984. Those three are the most important let's say uh, um all over the world uh, all over even out even outside italy i mean and house by the cemetery i mean you know among among the people that that we are around is considered a classic film of course like it's you know a part of that the, the films like the beyond and city of the living dead and then house by the cemetery always gets put in that in that kind of loop, but how did that come about for you? Like, how did you, how did you come about to meet Fulci too, for that matter? Yeah, well, um, I did a test of house, but my cemetery was not there. I uh, have been tested by another of the, of the staff. And, uh, but uh, I don't remember the first time I, I met him. But I can tell you that I remember is as, as it was yesterday. Definitely, um, I remember his voice. Is uh, the, the the faces he did while we were shooting, and uh, uh, his uh, his advice. He gave us a lot of advice. So um, I am in touch with Antonella Fulci, who she is his daughter, the only one left. Uh, apart from Camilla, she's not here anymore. And uh, she was with us on the set. And, uh, you know, I can tell you, it's uh, something that is, I, I keep on my heart and on my mind. I remember 
everything, everything, as if it was yesterday. I can, if Fuji would be here with me, I can, do you remember this? I can tell you that I could be the witness of everything and um, such experiences you can, you can never forget. So with some of the content that was in the movie, did your mother, your parents have any issues with you being around that sort of thing at such a young age? Oh, well, not at all, because uh, I have and I had, because my parents are not here anymore, a, a weird family. We were very fond of horror. And since we were young, we used to see horror movies and it was a celebration. We we were sitting down on the, on the pavement with some pillows and it was like cinema. We were all together. We were a lot. We were six. And so I can... Uh, refer horror to something to something we were used to so for me it was natural we i don't know why that's that's strange generally people children are scared and uh, the mother oh no 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 we were allowed to see everything <laughs> so for me it was a pleasure and i didn't even ask myself my mother didn't ask myself it was if i w wanted to do that because I wanted, and she knew that, that, oh my God, you know that we're going to do that? Yeah. So um, I'm, I was used to horror, and now I am as well. My life has always been um, connected to something, to horror. So uh, I was not scared at all, I can tell you. My sister a little bit more when she right. when she saw the movie the premiere she was scared she told me that she was frightened at all to the bones and i was not i was not well i saw all the tricks and the makeup it, yeah. it makes a course, difference yes. I can tell you <laughs> but I, I know when you leave it from inside is different but i can tell you i was my god i was so happy to be part of that movie and i am now as well yeah, I think that's one thing we all have in common is that we are our families were all pretty weird and let us watch that kind of thing pretty early on. I think that we all share that. Well, I think a lot of families from that time period too, it wasn't looked down upon like it is now. Like if you let your kid watch a watch an, a a graphic horror movie, it it wasn't the same as it is today. No, it was not at all. Uh, there was a you know the the lots of movies has the uh, were forbidden to children and now everything you can see everything anything anytime whatever but at the time we were you know were, were um, privated and uh, I think the hospital cemetery was uh, there has a permission up to you know or 18 or 14 I don't remember the the censor um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know uh, up to what age you were allowed to see that. It was very gore. There was a lot of blood, you know. So to start with, I can tell you that, well, if I could turn back time, I would say mm, probably it was not suitable for children for even to, to shoot it. But I can tell you that when you shoot a, a movie, um, it was so, everything was so national. So we, we didn't ask ourselves well, what, what were we doing, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it has been a very big gift to be part of that movie now. And uh, I think that you can, you, you read something about it, that I'm trying to keep this memory alive, especially of Fulci. I wanted to ask you about Fulci too. In terms of his style as a director was he any different with adults as he was with children well probably well i think that everyone knows that he was a little bit rude on set you know i think that you know as well do you yeah, yeah we, we yeah <laughs> and yeah he, ha he hasn't he hadn't a very good reputation and i can tell you that it was severe it was strict and um, indeed to to us children uh he had um it added a special um, a special manner 
but a little bit better, I can tell you. But it was very demanding. And me and Giovanni Frezza, who is Bob in the movie, yeah. um, we were we were as, as if we were uh, adults professionally. We were very, for us, he was like a teacher, a school teacher. And we were very, uh, we were waiting for instructions. We were very, um, we respected him a lot. And yes, it was demanding. He wanted us to be all the, always together like fiance and i was very shy and didn't want to so we we had um a scene where i had to to be very close to him keeping his hands and uh, so when we were we were off i said okay giovanni take your tear her hand away i don't want to hold your hand and now we are not shooting and Gucci, take your hands Okay, okay, I'm gonna take your hand because you wanted us to be a couple, you know, probably, you know, like you can say, probably uh, as children, of course, but not all as friends, probably something more, a, a, a big um, a particular feelings. And we had a particular feelings, but just as friends. And on the set, we should appear very close. And I was very shy, I didn't want to. <laughs> that was a big problem for me. Was this the first time you had visited the United States when you were shooting uh, House by the Cemetery? Yes, it was the, the first time. So I remember when I received the call, I was in the movie. My mother replied to the phone to the agent and uh, I was there look, staring at my mother and my mother was mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and she she mime you know like the airplane and so i understood that i was in so oh my god i was so happy i remember i was um you know i see my mother even now because when you leave beautiful experiences um they as i told you um they are part of your life so i i feel them so fresh so new and, as it is it was yesterday and um and i went to new york and then to boston and you know oh my god because i, I used to see uh united states on tv through you know sitcom like such arnold you know arnold arnold it was a sitcom of the 80s and everything for you know, the skyscrapers and the lights so when when i went to new york I, you know all the time looking like oh my god look oh my god <laughs> with my hair like this <laughs> looking up <laughs> so no it was amazing amazing everything from the food you had five liters of milk we have we had just one liter <laughs> so everything was huge <laughs> and i was oh my god i'm all the time like this and I remember my feelings and my emotions. I, I do. And, uh, you know, when you see things as a child, everything is beautiful. But I can tell you it was. This is always interesting to me. The, the dialogue is not recorded when you're shooting the movie. Is that correct? We uh, spoke in Italian. And uh, they have been dubbed after some 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 lines have been changed. So if you if, if you see there is not um, it seems that we are speaking and something on and there is not the the don't collide. Let's say it's because probably have been changed. Some lines have been changed. And um, and uh, <laughs> you know I can tell you I can report you something about Giovanni Frezza is not in the system uh, let's say in the movie anymore i don't know i know that his voice is terrible you know right. it looks like yeah. blah, 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 blah. and yeah. <laughs> and people always tell me my um, you know his reputation <laughs> has been affected by that and while he was very good at acting and the food she was very happy with him and everyone realized that that's why he had in on other movies Giovanni did other movies, Demons with um, mm -hmm. Demony. And uh, and it's not his fault. So when we had a convention in the United States, the only one he did in 2011 uh, at the re reunion in uh, Indianapolis, he said, 
first of all, I wanted to say, I'm sorry, that's not me, that's not my voice. I know that you hate it. It's not my fault, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, because at the time we used to um, dub with a uh, male voice, a female voice, children were, have, were dubbed by the women. And uh, I know that sounds very disturbing. It's not his fault. And I'm on his no. side. I mean, that was, I think that was typical in a lot of those movies. Yeah. It was obviously an adult woman doing the voice of the kids. We were yeah. actually, we've got a photo together at that horror hound show that you mentioned. Yeah, that's fine. We, yeah. we all yes. met. Yeah. Cause that was like the first show I think that you all did together. Is that correct? The first and the last one, it was 12, 12, 11. Uh, um, at the Horror Hound, yes, it was the reunion of our Spelibus Cemetery, the 13th anniversary. And it was Katrina Nicole and the Doug Marla Sander and the Carlo De Meo and lots of others. And unfortunately, some of them, all of them, uh, they're not in, they're not, and they died, unfortunately. So there were, there are only, there, are, there is only me. Dagmar, Paolo Marco, the, and uh, Catriona. We are the only, and Giovanni, the only one left representing Hospital Cemetery in its entirety. I wanted to ask you about the cast too. And I think uh, there's two people that you have the most contact with in the film. Uh, Giovanni, of course. And then I guess the other big one would be Anya, right? Anya Catriona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, just kind of like your, your interactions with them. I can tell you, I can tell you. Anya seems that um, she had to be there. She has been imposed, you know. That's what I, I have been said. Mm -hmm. I hope she doesn't, has, um, she doesn't uh, be angry about it. But that's what I've been told. And... Um, I didn't have any, I didn't met her directly, probably I just, I just saw him, but, uh, her, but I didn't uh, act with her. So I was just, no, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, I did. I did. I can tell you because, um, I had another role in the movie. I don't know if you know that and I have, you know, this hand as well as, uh, Dr. Freudson's hand, nothing to do with me, you know, you know. And so I had to kill her. I had <laughs> the possibility of, kill, of killing somebody. I killed her while she was in the basement and I cut her throat. She didn't cry. She didn't cry. She was not scary. So Fulci was a little bit angry because she was not in, in, in the role. You know, I was, I was a child and I was asking, you know, there is a monster in front of you. Why don't you scream? I would be scared. I would be dying. Oh, my God. So we, I cut her throat. She didn't scream, and we had to do that again. <laughs> so I was, hmm. But now I can tell you that her character is very um, enigmatic. I mean, um, we. I don't understand lots of, uh things she did in the movie and probably no one will tell us why you know such as she was cleaning the blood and the in the kitchen mm -hmm. why she doesn't she was not scared before dying you know um but probably that's part of his role and no one will have an answer only Fuji well, probably that <laughs> i wanted to ask because when i found out the thing about your hands i was like I wonder if they ever explained to her why it was her hands. Like, did they ever tell you why they were using your hands? Like in those scenes, like there's scenes with you holding Bob, I think against the door, that's your yeah. hand too. And I was just curious, like if they ever explained that. <laughs> because, uh, you know, Frostein was, uh, um, you know, used to fatty himself with part of flesh of other people, you know, he killed. So, he used to regenerate himself, taking part of bodies. So this hand um, was belonging to a child he killed, and in corp he used to have. I don't know. Don't ask me more because you know it was it's nonsense. <laughs> but 
but he had a hand of a child because he ate he killed him and and somehow regenerated his flesh by using part of the body of of the people he killed so uh he, he cried even you know when you hear him crying it's like three children crying all together and moaning yeah. you know the time. and uh but don't ask me why. And and, and the and the uh, it looks like um you know the, the the face which was a mask of course was like um reminds somebody told me that it remind reminds of a butterfly uh, when uh, you know like a head of a butterfly um and it was dressed like um a soldier of the U of the US of the past mm -hmm. you know with uniform um, but it's a very it, i mean now turning back at the, at the time i didn't think it was very scary because i saw the mask and you and you see a little bit there was a mask on it but now i can tell you that it was an iconic per, uh, character now yeah. uh, very particular yeah. yes at the beginning um i think that they had other tests of other of other at the beginning it was not supposed probably to be like that i saw some pictures some tests and it was like um an, an, an a skinny person with all the muscles all only muscles in the face you know so there was like the, you can you could see the the eyes the eyes is you know only but it was no mask it was just makeup with muscles only muscles if you uh, you know, unskinny a person. Mm. There's the mask. It was very scary. I like that person, that 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 role, that uh, character. But I can tell you that it's that I I love Frankenstein now. I love Frankenstein, and I'm sorry that in Italy we don't have any statuette, as you should should have in probably in the US. If it, this movie would have been shot in the US, Frankenstein would have been, you know, like. Um, like Mike Myers, like you know, he deserves to have a, a to have a, a statuette as well. Like you have in in U.S. monsters, everyone has a, a statuette. It doesn't in Italy. So mm. I just want to tell everyone: do something for us. <laughs> the Funko Pop, you know, a Funko yeah. Pop. That would be amazing. <laughs> That would be there. Yeah. There, there well, is a statue. There is a Freudstein statue now that I think did Trick or Treat make that Trick or Treat Studios. Some studio made that, and it's just recently came out, like within the past year. Um, because I think that like the movie just keeps gathering more and more kind of. I see new t shirts and things like that from time to time that, yeah. that are up on these sites as well. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting that I want I wanted to mention this to you too because. It's almost like those movies went away for a while and then home media kind of caught on like the popularity of DVD and everything. And these movies kind of found an, a whole new audience. Did you kind of get that impression too? Yes, I think that um, I can tell you first, I can tell you first that go going to conventions, especially in the uh, US and Great Britain and elsewhere in Germany as well, people there is very fond of House by the Cemetery. And there are lots of versions of this movie. I can tell you, you don't know how many versions we have of this movie, uh, DVD, CD. Um, you know, I don't even imagine we, we have so many and I'm so happy because uh, this keeps this movie alive. And, uh, and there is a big collection about House by the Cemetery. And audience loved it, loved this movie a lot. If I, I don't know if I replied to your to your questions. <laughs> I mean, just essentially, like it did kind of your acting career, you like you kind of moved on and and went elsewhere, you know. And did you think, what is it? It's close to it's over forty years later that people are still, you know, buying copies of this movie, buying T-shirts. <laughs> Uh, you know, you just uh, yeah. I, I think that in this last period, uh, in this last fifteen years, this movie has been you know is 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 going is selling everything cats and dogs. Let's say everything about these movies because I don't know even thirty years has, have passed. It's still it's still going on even better and better and uh, I'm. 
lots of people ask me, according to you, why this is only also so in fashion? So um, probably it is because this movie, we don't have movie like this anymore. We don't have movies. True. Uh, and House by the Cemetery is part of the trilogy, but it's it's uh, it has um, it's a, a gothic movie, and there's lots of poetry inside. It's different from the others, and so uh, you keep on thinking that probably Freud stand, somehow you love him. It's a monster that you love somehow. I don't know why. It's very. It, uh, requested people love the movie and they're very affectionate to this movie. I, you should tell me, you should tell me why. Oh man, I for you want me to go because for me, it's for it. the exactly what you said. It's a gothic movie, but it also has a very dreamlike quality to it, where even though it appears to not make sense, like in certain scenes, like what were you talking about with Anya and things it almost makes it better that it doesn't make sense in those ways because it leaves a lot of room for interpretation about, is this like, what is really going on? And a movie that you can look back on after 40 years and be like, this could be interpreted so many different ways, like yeah. about what's actually going on in this movie. That's why it's so rewatchable as well. Yeah. You look, oh, I need to see this again. And all of Fulci's movies really have that dreamlike nightmarish feel to them. But like you were saying, this is not like really any of his other movies, I don't think. I think this is, you know, gothic monster movie kind of in a way. Um, but yeah, it's all I think it's one of his more unique movies. Since this movie is open to interpretation in about a thousand different ways, what is your interpretation <laughs> of the ending of the movie? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I think that I have the right reply. I'm <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't wanna I'm very humble, but I want I, I can tell you that probably the end is that um Giovanni I mean to keep Giovanni uh to save him, I had to keep him in my dimension, uh, which uh, which is the, the, the dimension of that people. So he will live forever, we will remain a child forever with me but i saved him so that's the um uh you know that he had to pay this to be always alive and uh, but you know that uh, there are lots of other interpretations and sometimes fans call write me and say what do you think about this what do you think about that and say oh i never thought about it but i i, I like the idea that everyone has his its proper point of view because at least it's a movie that leave you it leaves you thinking about it it ends and say okay so probably it is because of this and freudstein what about freudstein and what about this what about that i think that um me and my mother mary mary freudstein he, he killed us okay freudstein mm -hmm. killed us and we were in another dimension and we were trying to to save people from that house it will keep on living in that basement forever and so probably there could be even um a sequel of the movie i would oh, yeah. like to you know i was thinking about it of a, a sequel and a prequel you know not a sequel because it seems that i it's something that it's very difficult to do uh, a sequel of such a movie, but a prequel probably yes. A story about me before dying, me and, my, and the family, Freudstein family before dying. I cannot interpret it, of course, anymore. <laughs> you know, it's uh, impossible for me to be a nine-year-old, nine-year-old girl. But I, it would be good to see some what happened before, and I have some ideas about it. Yeah, that would be a, that's a great idea because it's so you don't really have any information about that or what exactly happened before that movie picks up. So yeah, a prequel. No, would we be can perfect. Just imagine. The, the the sequel. No, because I think that you should it should end as Fuji did. Otherwise, it seems to be not. It seems to be that we don't respect 
his idea. It ended up like that. But before we could even imagine it, we are. I think that we are somehow allowed to think what happened before. But who knows? There are so many rights on this movie, and it's difficult to 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 have the possibility, the permission to do that. So there is just that, just one movie, and and stop. Probably, it has more mystery like this. Now you had mentioned earlier Murder Rock, which was a couple of years later, like three years later. Um, mm -hmm. And you had a brief role in that. Were there ever any other opportunities to do? any other horror films around that time period because i think you you kind of retired from acting shortly after that one right yes after after i left in 1984 I, 80, 1985 so one year after mad rock which has been shot in 1984 and um fuji called me wanted me to be in that movie i didn't I didn't ha have any test because he knew me, he knew how I was acting. And um, that was my last role because I had to do Ochi Chornia. It was a um, Nikita Mikhailkov's director, a movie of the very important movie with uh, famous Italian actors. But I stopped it because there was um, there had been a misunderstood between my agent and my my mother and the production, and so it ended up like that. Um, and I kept on being a, a, a girl, like everyone was, and I wanted to be like everyone because, I, as I told you, I felt a little bit weird at the time. And I, I, I can tell you with all my heart that I repent left. Having, having left that, uh, the scene, you know, the field, I can tell you. I just have one other question about like just house. Cause just, just for my own personal, like, you know, <laughs> yes. so, you know, the iconic picture that you have that the black and white picture, which kind of like you just like with your hand out, like screaming, do you recall anything about that? Like in terms of taking that picture or like how that came about? Well, I remember, I remember pushing his face, Giovanni's face, on um, the door, and and he was screaming, and this was wedding, and we were. I remember that very moment, uh, and I remember Fulci and everyone there were very impressed by his acting. It was very good. I remember we were doing that, and it was. I was thinking, oh, he's very good at doing that. And uh, so uh, I remember they cut cut my hands, but it was a fake one, of course. And um, I now I feel, I can feel, now I can tell you the presence of Fulci is here. And I can tell you, I was there. You know, it's strange, it's strange. Do you remember there is a, a, um, a, um, a moment where Freudstein cut, uh, um, took off, rips, or yeah. rips the, yeah. the, you know, the salt here, the flesh here. And, uh, but before uh, he, um, he uh, put the knife inside the worm, inside the belly of uh, Freudstein and all the, the worms, uh, were nye, 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 do like yeah. this, and there were there were lots of people around there. There were there was Fulci, and Fulci did it great, and and everyone was clapping. He did a very good job. I remember when people did a good job, he recognized that. He used to tell, "Oh, you didn't do that." He was screaming. He was rude, but he uh, he used to say good when it was. And uh, there were some some scenes which were definitely very beautiful to be there as a witness. And uh, one of those was this one, I can tell you. So you had mentioned that your family kind of grew up, you grew up with your family watching these scary movies and these horror movies and everything. And you're, you're still a fan today. Is that correct? Mm, yes, yes, I am. And I, I, I love horror. Horror is part of my life, but not only as uh, talking about movies. 
I mean, I have a collection of 60 now, nearly 60 fake skulls. Of course, the fake, <laughs> I can <Wow>. tell you. <laughs> and I love all these gadgets and uh, and uh, everyone knows me like I, as I am, I'm a horror person. I love Gothic, I have all mystery, I love everything about it. That's my life. So when I had to shoot that movie, for me, it was natural because I did something I always liked to see, to do, and to, to know. And uh, but I can tell you that nowadays there are not movies which scares me, which scare me. So I'm very sad. I'm not used to see nowadays movie. Um, it's different. And I think that you, you as well, you can understand what I'm telling because there is not a mystery. There is not the the magician, the magic in, in the movie we used to see. There was now there are also digital makeup effects, and you know, so you don't. You are not used to, there is not any imagination anymore because you are allowed to see anything. You can do anything. Instead, we, you know, like The Exorcist, which is my best movie ever. When you see how they did it, you are impressed. You say, oh my God, they did like with this. They, did they had to invent, to, to, to find the way to do that. Now you can do whatever you want so mm -hmm. the, the they're not charming anymore this movie i don't want to see um i don't see any movie now i don't i don't like them i just i'm stuck in the past you think too that there's not directors like fulci or argento that had like a vision where you can watch their movies and kind of immediately tell it's their movie like without even knowing who directed it, if you put on a full cheer in Argento movie, I could pretty much tell you, you know, who directed yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. I know they have the, their own style. Do you think then now, do you have any uh, directors that are capable to, to be, uh, let's say, uh, to be mentioned as, um, the pupils of uh, Fulci and uh, and Argento. I don't think so. Probably just some movies, but Lamberto Bava as well. Not only, of course, uh, uh, Fulci and Argento. But I can yeah. tell you that I don't know. I'm stuck in the nineties. Probably in the nineties or some some movie. Sometimes they come. It happens that we have some sometimes a movie that is. Um, we can see the, okay this good but not as in the past i think a lot of the times with the hollywood system everything it, it, they're encouraging everything to be the same or um it's a remake a retelling of something that was already made and done better and independent films i think that's the only chance that we've got to get something that's actually new and good uh, if they're made independently um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's nobody up there in the Fulci, you know, no. um, Bava. Yeah. In Argento, no. no, probably more independent movies are capable to do with, um, with a very simple means, uh, they probably, they can create the environment, the, the mystery and something like this, but when it happens to big productions probably i don't don't feel that anymore then they're not uh charming you know when you mm -hmm. see a movie and you stay there from the beginning to the end and uh, you say good and it stops and you say in the end you say oh my god it has been so beautiful now it's very difficult to have a line good from the beginning to the end so mm -hmm. it could start it could start you say okay it's interesting let's see and you say it ends and say mm. and so what did you want to say there is no reply and you, you, there's no so some movies are nonsense you know they mm -hmm. don't deserve to be seen. so it's very difficult to to there is nothing up to our expectations let's say that's a anymore. good way to put it yeah that's a really good way to put it no, um, you know people tell me why we don't have we don't have movies like this anymore you know why because when you start like that 
you cannot reproduce the, 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 the things like this anymore you know when you when you're like this uh, you can get back and find something that deserves to be seen when you when you touch the sky <laughs> you can't touch it again you say yeah yeah it all goes downhill. It, it's all downhill from that point. Yeah. Is there anything coming in the near future that you wanted to promote any convention appearances or anything you have coming up this year? Well, okay. Now I have to, I have other two conventions and, uh, in, in Canada and then, uh, in Germany. Um, and I have lots of projects. But I'm very busy now. I I can't I can't accomplish every, everything now. Uh, have been given some screenplay or to to see if I could do that. I I was supposed to be in another movie from U.S. productions, but I'm very busy now. So I take these two conventions now. I say okay, I take a stop for for a while, but I want to come back. I I would like to come back as as a director more than an actress. I can tell you, and probably I have some ideas, and uh, I have a project, um, some projects, and a movie I would like to, or not me direct directly to be in or direct it. Of course, I'm not. I have not the uh, the the capability. But somebody else, I can. Uh, oh, well, let's see if I manage to to give this screenplay to somebody else, and let's see. It's a movie about the past, of course. It's a tribute to the past. So you will realize my love to the past in everything in it. I just want to say that, I mean, it's been amazing to talk to you as you are like an iconic, I'll call you an iconic figure. For and, sure. Uh, yeah, and it's just always, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk oh, to you. Oh, it's a pleasure for me because I'm a fan. I'm a horror fan first. So when I meet fans... I'm so happy because we share the same love, the same feelings. So I don't feel like being, you know, like this. I'm the same level. I I'm very um, disposed to be to talk to people, and uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to 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 speak with you, to talk with fans, to to hold them, to take pictures. That's very. Um, you know, you give and you have back. That's very important. Yeah. And it's, yeah. if it's a bit of a horror, there is always love between us because we are weird. We know we are weird. We know we are crazy, but no, we make no harm. Give us the thumbs up. Up you butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a fuck. Do I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> let's, let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, I need to do that. No, don't you yeah. do it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirts on T Public. There are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Deadpit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on. In addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon. Dot com if you're interested. Tears started only one dollar. We ain't